Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to our daily quiz. But before we begin, we are pleased to announce the launch of yet another big initiative that is Target Mains 2022, which is all set to begin from today. This program has been designed to help aspirants who are preparing for this year's mains and it shall be exclusively available on the Baiju's Exam Prep app. Under Target Mains 2022, Every day at 7.30 p.m., we shall be having live sessions through which we will be covering all the important static and current affairs topics for your mains, along with providing practice questions and discussing model answers. So if you're preparing for this year's mains, or even if you're preparing for next year's attempt, and if you want to improve your mains answer writing skills, then please do not miss the series, which will go live on the Baiju's Exam Prep app. The link for downloading the app and regarding the finer details of the course shall be shared in the description box and in the comments below. So with this, let's get started with the daily quiz for today. The first question, which of the following statements are correct? Dinosaurs of the sauropod family were widespread millions of years ago in the territory that is now India. Fossils of these animals have been found in Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Meghalaya. See, this question on dinosaurs and their fossils in India has been taken up because we have a related article in today's The Hindu. The article refers to the discovery of an abnormal dinosaur egg in India and this unique fossil specimen that has been found has provided even more evidence regarding the widespread presence of dinosaurs in India during the Cretaceous period. In this context, it is important to note that dinosaurs of the sauropod family which are considered to be amongst the largest land animals that ever lived. They were widespread across today's India and their fossils have been found across Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Meghalaya. So this makes it clear that both the given statements are correct and hence option C is the right answer. Now let's take a look at the second question. Which of the following statements are incorrect? Groundwater contamination can occur only due to industrial pollutants. The second statement says, contaminants found in groundwater cover a broad range of physical, inorganic chemical and organic chemical, bacteriological and radioactive parameters. See, groundwater contamination is in news because according to this article in the Hindu, the Odisha State Pollution Control Board has found various contaminants in groundwater such as fluoride, iron, various types of bacteria such as coliform bacteria, along with contaminant parameters such as nitrate and as well as fecal coliform bacteria which leads to the contamination and pollution of groundwater. See, when it comes to groundwater contamination, it can be caused not just by man-made products and industrial pollutants, but it can also happen due to naturally occurring contaminants. For example, presence of excess iron, arsenic, fluoride can also lead to natural contamination of the groundwater table. And of course, various industrial pollutants, including toxic chemicals, heavy metals, fertilizers, etc., also leads to the contamination of groundwater. So this is what makes the first statement incorrect. However, the second statement is correct because groundwater can be contaminated by a variety of parameters or sources, including physical contaminants, inorganic and organic chemical contaminants, even bacteriological contaminants and pathogens, and as well as radioactive parameters. So since the first statement is incorrect, the right answer is option A, one only, because the question is asking you to identify the incorrect statement. Now let's take a look at the third question. Which of the following statements best defines the G33? It is an informal grouping at the UN to push for UN reforms. It is a group of small island countries for collectively representing their interests at the Climate Change Convention. It is a coalition of developing countries for coordination during WTO negotiations, especially in regard to agriculture. It is a list of countries that have boycotted POPs or persistent organic pollutants. The correct answer is option C. The G33 refers to an informal coalition of developing countries, which provides a platform for them to coordinate their policies with regard to agriculture 
while these countries are participating in WTO negotiations. Now, this topic is in news because the 12th WTO ministerial conference has begun at Geneva, and India's Union Minister for Commerce and Industry has addressed the G33 ministerial meeting to highlight the agriculture related issues being faced by developing nations in order to protect their interests at the WTO ministerial conference. See, the ongoing 12th WTO ministerial is of great importance because it is being held after nearly four years. And the talks that are going to take place between the 12th of June to the 15th of June will play a significant role in influencing global trade, especially trade with regard to agricultural commodities. As several key issues related to the agreement on agriculture are expected to be discussed during the 12th ministerial. With regard to agricultural commodities and market access, generally developed nations have an edge, and hence, developing nations have come together under the G33 to coordinate their policies in order to protect their food security and agricultural interests while limiting market access to developed nations through provisions such as special safeguard mechanism which is part of the agreement on agriculture then with regard to trade in agriculture developed and developing nations also have a conflict with regard to agricultural subsidies and with regard to public stock holding for food security programs so on all these key issues Developed nations often push back against developing nations. And hence, the developing countries have formed a coalition led by India, known as the G33, to push back against the dominance of the developed countries. Now, let's take a look at the fourth question. Which of the following initiatives under Purvotar Kalyan have helped in transforming the political and economic landscape of Northeast India in recent years? ASPA areas reduced and peace accords with insurgent groups or new air routes for improving connectivity under Udan scheme, the construction of Bogibil Bridge, the setting up of higher education institutions, or the establishment of bamboo technology parks. Which of these initiatives, taken up under Purvotar Kalyan, have helped in transforming the political and economic landscape of Northeast India in the last few years? Now, this topic is in news, because according to this press release from the Prime Minister's office, PM Narendra Modi, has praised Purvotar Kalyan initiative, which has transformed the northeast of India over the last eight years through various initiatives and programs, such as reduction of AFSPA areas, signing of peace agreements with insurgent outfits, and tackling insurgency in the region, along with improving connectivity through new air routes under Udan scheme, and boosting land connectivity through the construction and opening of Bogibil Bridge in Assam which happens to be India's longest rail come road bridge. Apart from this, the government of India has also established elite institutions of higher education in the Northeast, such as AIMS and National Sports University. And even bamboo technology parks have been set up in Assam and Arunachal Pradesh to exploit the natural resource for the economic benefit of the local communities. All these initiatives have transformed the political and economic landscape of Northeast India and hence, in the given question, all the five are correct. So option D would be the right answer. Now let's take up a question from the 2020 prelims paper. Consider the following statements. Genetic changes can be introduced in the cells that produce eggs or sperms of a prospective parent. A person's genome can be edited before birth at the early embryonic stage. Human-induced pluripotent stem cells can be injected into the embryo of a pig. See, all the three given statements are correct and option D is the right answer. Because see, genetic changes can be introduced in the cells that produces eggs or sperms of a prospective parent by using various methods and technologies. Through certain chemicals, through ultraviolet radiation, etc. The DNA structure of the cells can be made to undergo certain mutations, which results in the changing of genetic structure in the eggs or sperms of prospective parents which can then be passed on to future generations as well. So statement 1 is definitely correct. Statement 2 is also correct because it is referring to gene editing technologies such as CRISPR. Through CRISPR, it is possible to edit the genome of the fetus at the early embryonic stage before birth in order to ensure that the baby will have desired characteristics and features. This groundbreaking gene editing technique has raised a lot of controversy on ethical grounds 
and clearly the second statement is also correct even the third statement is correct because human induced pluripotent stem cells can be injected into the embryo of a pig and as well as into the embryo of few other test animals while conducting research and development in the field of stem cells so all three given statements are correct and hence option d is the right answer now coming to the fact of the day let's look at this article from the indian express that deals with the food safety index the food safety index is in news because last week the food safety and standards authority of india released the state food safety index for 2021-22 and it ranks the performance of india states and union territories with regard to their performance on food safety see the food safety index was developed by the food safety and standards authority of india and this index aims to measure the performance of states and union territories on selected parameters of food safety according to the fss ai the index is aimed at encouraging states and union territories to improve their performance and work towards establishing a proper food safety ecosystem within their jurisdiction this index is released annually for a financial year and the latest index was released on the world food safety day which is marked on the 7th of june and this year's edition that was released was the fourth edition after the index was launched in 2018-19 this index takes into account the performance of states and union territories with regard to five key parameters which in turn have been assigned a different weightage in the assessment the first parameter focuses on human resources and institutional data that has been provided for by state governments to focus on food safety this measures the availability of human resources such as the number of food safety officers the availability of appellate tribunals and advisory committees to deal with food safety the second parameter focuses on compliance it essentially measures the ability of the state government to ensure compliance with regard to food safety standards through enforcement of laws and also measures the promptness of the state authorities in responding to consumer grievances this parameter has been allocated a weightage of 30% whereas human resource and institutional data has been given a weightage of 20% in the index then comes the third parameter that deals with food testing including the infrastructure and surveillance needed to keep a check on adulteration and poor quality food products then comes the fourth parameter that is training and capacity building which measures the ability of the state to train the required staff and finally the last parameter is consumer empowerment that looks at the role of the states in promoting awareness about food safety amongst the public these last three parameters have been given a weightage of 20% 10% and 20% respectively as per the latest food safety index among the large states tamil nadu and gujarat have performed the best followed by maharashtra with the worst performance being registered by telangana bihar and andhra pradesh among the small states goa and manipur take the top spot whereas mizoram and arunachal pradesh are at the bottom of the table among union territories jammu and kashmir and delhi are at the top positions whereas dadra nagar haveli and daman diu followed by lakshadweep take the last positions with this let's conclude today's discussion thanks for watching